Midjourney is now much more responsive to the words you use. You have the chance to really tell the bot what you want to see, but what words should you use in your prompt? I'm going to teach you all about that today. And if you're new here, my name is Nolan. It's my goal to make learning AI as straightforward as possible. I want to thank Clarinet and whoever else helped put together those guides over on Discord. I'll leave a link to that thread in the description below. You see, there are five categories of words you should be exploring in your prompt. We are going to go through them one at a time, and the first category should be familiar to you. It's the concept of nouns. Nouns are the foundational subject of your prompt. They are words that name people, places, things, or ideas, serving as the main subjects or objects in a description, like a skyscraper. They can also establish a setting or context as in a forest, which sets the scene for further description. Nouns for characters like archetypes are really powerful in your prompt. I'm talking things like doctor, warrior, angel. They are all well represented by Midjourney. You could mention people or characters like a mermaid or detective Jimmy Crab Cakes. Number three is hilarious. You could mention animals or creatures like a phoenix or a cyborg chimera. You could mention places or settings like an island palace or a spaceship. And finally, you could mention objects or items like the Sword of Montreal or the Book of Eternal Secrets. Start your prompt with nouns as they are the backbone of your prompt. They establish the key subject and setting. You know, instead of a tall building, you could say skyscraper. Instead of lots of trees, you can say forest. To be honest, you can place nouns anywhere in the prompt, but the closer they are to the front, the more powerful they will be, in the sense that Midjourney has historically favored the beginning of the prompt more than what appears after. If you're interested in seeing more examples of words you can use, I created a free PDF for you to download. The link will be in the description below. It is a few pages long and covers the topic of this video a little more in depth. There are a lot more examples. The name of the next category might be new to you, but I promise you use these words all the time. They're called prepositions, and all you need to know is that the preposition is a word or phrase that gets placed before a noun. These words are often tiny, and you'll notice them everywhere now. Words like at. Jimmy Crab Cakes is sitting at the bar. On. A living room made of clay, there is a blue mug on the shelf. These small words indicate the direction, location, or time of an object. They can also introduce an object, as in a can of monsters. Prepositions are all about space. They establish a spatial relation between different elements in a scene. These prepositions can be used to place objects in relation to one another, creating a sense of depth or perspective. For example, a cat beneath the tree. It's going to place the cat in a specific spatial relation to the tree. Unfortunately here, I think number two is the only one that actually worked. Although you could argue the cat is looking up in the other three, and maybe that signifies that it's beneath the tree. Either way, number two is what we're looking for. Prepositions can also suggest movement or direction, adding a dynamic element to the scene. Leaves drifting across the river implies motion over time. Mid-Journey version 6 is quite an impressive tool and it's only going to continue to grow and evolve over time, meaning you'll almost certainly be tempted to include more than one specific subject in your prompt. After establishing the subjects, use prepositions to define their spatial relationship, creating a sense of place and arrangement. An old robot leans against a phone booth, or a dog hiding behind a palm tree. I hope what I've been saying has made sense so far, and if you've learned something new, please leave a like on this video so we could share it with more people. I need your help. Thanks. The third category of words you should know are called adjectives. I'm sure you've heard of those before. And these are really simple. Adjectives describe or modify a noun. Prepositions show direction or the place of a noun. Adjectives describe the look of the noun. Visually descriptive adjectives are going to enhance our prompt. These adjectives can paint a picture of the physical appearance of an object, like a weathered wooden bench, suggesting age and exposure to elements. They can also evoke emotion or atmosphere, as in a serene mountain lake, beautiful and calm. Adjectives might 
might actually have the most weight when determining the look of your generation. I'm talking the difference between ornate silverware and minimal silverware. The difference between a colossal sized rodent and a miniature sized rodent. <laughs> They're pretty cute. Adjectives can be used to define the appearance of something like a rustic car, the size or shape of something like a winding staircase. They can be used to specify the texture or material of something like a leathery laptop or a fuzzy laptop. I don't, I don't think these turned out very well. Number two is kind of funny though. Color is also a key adjective. You can use simple colors like red or blue, or you can specify the color even more with a specific word, like an emerald colored PlayStation 6. Pretty cool mock-ups. You can mention a collection of colors like a pastel colored top hat, or even a color scheme like monochromatic. Colors are really powerful adjectives. Once the foundation of your prompt is set, adjectives add depth and color to your nouns. On to category four. I think you should be including adverbs in your prompt. We learned that adjectives describe nouns. Adverbs are all about modifying. You're not changing the description, you're specifying it. You're going to provide more detail about the manner in which something appears in your prompt. I'll be honest, a lot of adverbs aren't really applicable to mid-journey at the moment, so we are going to narrow our focus to one concept. Emphasis. How is something happening? What do you want to emphasize in your prompt? What have you already said in your prompt that could be helped with clarification? Remember, I want you to think emphasis. It's a complementary action that you're going to be describing. Like here, the Oreo was dunked dramatically. We're emphasizing that splash that we're looking for. Adverbs can also refine the qualities described by our adjectives. Detective Jimmy Crabcakes contemplates under a single dimly lit street lamp. Now look, you don't have to explicitly remember the concept and definition of adverbs, but you should try your best to remember that adding more descriptive words will probably be a good thing in the end. Focus on the how of your prompt. I use the same seed number for this next example to show you the difference. The green smoke is blowing calm across the field. Pay attention to this grid and what you see here, maybe staring at number one might help the most. Because look what happens when we change calmly to violently. The green smoke is blowing violently across the field. Same seed, all we changed is the adverb. How is the smoke blowing? You might not think that's a big difference, but the fact that there is a difference means that these words matter to the generator. Adverbs are not just about how something happens, they can also refer to the degree or extent of an attribute. A foreign anthropomorphic alien with barely any muscles. I think number one is absolutely hilarious. I like the pose in number two as well. Contrast that with a foreign anthropomorphic alien with extremely large muscles. The adverb of extreme extremely describes how much of something we get in the prompt. I would not want to mess with any of these guys. Oh boy. Remember, it's just about enhancing the description. Now we're almost done. We're on to the fifth and final category. That last category of words you need to consider are references. These references can mention specific artistic styles, cultural elements, or historical settings that all add depth and context to a scene. It's all about linking context within the prompt. They can provide a stylistic framework or aesthetic like Detective Jimmy Crabcakes in the style of Art Deco. These are so cool. That hazy anime vibe, amazing. But references can also give cultural or historical context. Something as simple as a scene reminiscent of Victorian England. I love number one, I think that looks so beautiful. It's going to set a specific time and place along with the associated cultural norms. You could reference the dichotomy between time periods like a futuristic viking axe. And look how cool these are. Those are sick. Likewise, maybe an ancient Greek sniper rifle. Pretty cool. I highly suggest you consider placing the reference near the beginning of the prompt, maybe even the first thing. Normally I wouldn't consider this that important, but version 6 acts a little funny sometimes. So much so that you may even want to sandwich the references in your prompt. Mention it at the beginning and mention it at the end for good measure. Now let me show you some examples of what this process might look like when you put it all together. 
an Andy Warhol inspired pop art painting of a softly luminous mystical garden. The garden mysteriously grows inside of a volcano crater. Radiant bioluminescent plants among ancient angular rock formations. This was at S400 and C6, so we might lose a little bit of detail in our prompt, but I don't think you can deny how beautiful these images are, how visually rich they are. Same idea here. Look at number three. That is just so gorgeous. I, I can't believe it. Like, look at that, man. Like, oh, oh my God. Even this one. Holy cow. Now, I took that prompt's foundation and I tweaked it a little bit. Here we have an Andy Warhol inspired pop art painting of a translucent temple. The temple is fiercely lit with a vibrant fire inside. There are glossy clouds above the temple. There are radiant bioluminescent plants spread out around the base of the temple, in between ancient angular rock formations. And look at number one. That is absolutely incredible. I can't believe how well it followed the prompt. Maybe not the glossy clouds part, but maybe that just wasn't a very good descriptive phrase. I'm more impressed with the glowing plants in between angular rock formations, the translucent temple where we can see a fire lighting it up from the inside. Amazing, amazing work, Mid Journey. You are the best. This one too is pretty incredible, right? This was Stylized 40. I think that's so cool. Remember, there's a free PDF in the description below if you want some help remembering which words can flow into each category of your prompt. And if you want to see the best way to combine these categories into one prompt, I suggest you watch this video right here. I hope this made sense. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.